Hi guys, it's Ashley. And in today's video, I'm gonna take a deep uh, dive behind the scenes to explain why and how the real estate market has literally defied gravity during uh, COVID. The real estate market has been surprisingly strong and I have some very specific data that I wanna walk you through that really addresses that and explains how that has occurred. So bear with me, I'm gonna take a second here to share my screen and we're gonna go into this in more detail and it will help us to understand exactly what's going on. So <clears throat> what I wanna do is talk about unemployment. Unemployment obviously um, has been a big impact on many industries and a lot of people as um, all of the reaction to COVID has taken place, not only in the US, but around the world. But this obviously we're gonna specifically talk about the, the US marketplace. So on the right side of my slides here, I wanna take a look back at the last great recession we had, which was kind of 2007 through 2011 or 12, depending on what marketplace you're in. Um, but what I want to show you here or remind you of is that we started out at, at basically 5% unemployment when the great recession started and we went all the way to 10%, but it took about two years to get there. Okay. Over a two year time period, uh, the unemployment went from five to 10%. And then the recovery from that was very long and drawn out and took quite a long time, uh, many years to get back to, um, you know, that 5% before it goes off of the chart here to the right. We were only back down to 7.5% in 2013. It took another three years to get all the way back down to the uh, pre-existing unemployment conditions. So that's the playing field that we have. That was a very big unemployment hit to the economy. Um, probably only second to the Great Rece um, the Great Depression of the 1920s and early 30s. Um, however, what I want to do is look at now what's happened during COVID in 2020. We literally were trending in between three and a half and four percent of unemployment in early March, and it spiked all the way up to 14.7 percent in literally a matter of two months, from very healthy unemployment numbers to literally the, almost the worst of all time. And um, so unprecedented territory. We have obviously seen some recovery starting to head back in a lower direction, but still way above where we would traditionally be. Some of that's due to um, government stimulus packages that have been rolled out. And I think we're gonna see those numbers continue to go up and down a little bit um, as the economy recovers longer term. Um, but again, that sort of sets the playing field for what has happened. So just if you look at only unemployment in the aggregate, like the total picture, you're going to say, well, clearly that's going to affect the real estate market in a negative way because there are a lot of people out of work. Actually found a different story behind the scenes. So what I want to show you here is unemployment broken down by industry. Okay. And I'm going to start you on the right side of the graph. The category, the industries of leisure and hospitality, as we all know, have been very, very hard hit. Restaurants, theaters, sporting venues, conventions, all of those industries that support people getting together in large numbers. And since we haven't been able to do that for six months now, those industries were hit the fastest, the most directly impacted by unemployment and by you know decrease in the sales that they can generate in those industries. The other industries that have also been hit hard here, uh, retail trade at 8.8%, education and health services, 6.3%, um, transportation and warehousing, 13%. So transportation, of course, is Air, is the airline industry and the train industry and buses and all the ways that we normally get around um, to go see people and to travel for leisure. All of that, for the most part, has been shut down. So that's kind of the those segments of the industry and how they've responded. If we look at the far other end of the graph, we see financial uh, activities at 4.2%, which is virtually unaffected. Like there are certain industries that have had almost no impact of unemployment. And the reason being that those jobs and those industries can carry on with people working from home, being the ability to work remotely and use Zoom and Google Meets and all the other tools to actually carry on their activities. So 
that has been very eye-opening as we look at how is unemployment affected the real estate industry. Um, what we essentially see is the people most likely to already own a home or be planning to own a home have been the least affected by COVID and the unemployment that came out of COVID. So um, the green chart on this graph is actually the weekly wages, weekly earnings in these industries. So you'll also see on the left-hand side, people that make more money on an average typically are less affected by um, the unemployment that has come about as, as it relates to COVID. And on the far right side, that leisure and hospitality industry, those jobs typically carry the lowest weekly earnings with them. So there's sort of this inverse proportion or inverse relationship of the more you make, the least affected you are, and the least you make, the more affected you are, which um, has obviously been a very big struggle for those groups of people. Um, but it does explain how the real estate market has continued to um, have prices go up, how the sales numbers have continued to be strong, even in an environment where everything that we would have um, guessed about the real estate market have been completely different. And we've had to take new measures in showing homes and selling properties and all of the logistics that go into it. The real estate market has been able to sustain um, actually throughout all of that because the buyers and sellers, the underlying people that buy and sell real estate were still in the market and active and were not affected enough by employment to throw off the sales. Um, I've got one more slide I want to share with you that I think will also help illustrate this. Uh, the idea of the people most likely to buy or the most likely to already own property have been the least affected. It also is carries on when you look at it by age groups. So let's take a look at that. So on this graph, we've got two numbers here. We've got age and their unemployment by age group. So from left to right, the 24 or younger category currently only makes up 3% of the housing market. No, that's not that surprising. People at that age group are oftentimes just coming out of college, just in their first job, recently graduated from high school, and they don't statistically buy homes at that age group because they're still finding out where they're gonna live, what they're gonna do, you know, all of those um, kind of early adulthood activities, house, uh, buying a house typically comes a little bit later. But you'll see on this chart that that group has been affected the most or the worst by unemployment. So people in their first jobs, in those service industry jobs, the um, hospitality and leisure industry, oftentimes those are jobs that younger people take. And those are the jobs that have been the most affected by COVID. So as we move to the middle of the graph, the 25 to 34 year old age group, which typically consists of our first time home buyers, um, and they do make up about 25% of the overall housing market. While they've been affected by unemployment, it's been less, 9.7% unemployment for that age group, which again is probably double or a little bit more than double where that age group was trending before, but it's less than this, the younger group, the 24 year olds and younger. So it's been a softened approach to first time home buyers, but they have definitely been affected. And then as we look at the third category here on this, we see that the 35 plus age group, so people most likely already own a home or be um, ready to upgrade buy their next home or move up in size, um, they have been, again, the least affected, 6.8% unemployment for that group of people. Um, so those are the ones that are continuing to drive the real estate market. So said another way, or to summarize what all this information means, the reason the housing market has been able to sustain itself through this whole period is the people most likely to buy a home, sell a home, or invest in real estate have been the least affected by unemployment, and therefore they're still financially able to move forward. So um, I thought that that might be helpful to break it down and help uh, us take a, a look at which industries have been the most affected. We kind of knew that by common sense, but it definitely helps shed the light on and explain how the industry as a whole has continued to um, move forward actually and be above expected sales during COVID. So just wanted to give you that information. I thought it was very helpful to take a look at. If we can help anyone that you know, buy or sell real estate, if you're looking at it yourself, please reach out. We're always here as a resource. I'm Ashley Carter with the Carter Group Chicago in Keller Williams and Lincoln Park. We look forward to seeing you on a video real soon. Take care and have a great day.